Hello and welcome to Hilltop Terabi. In this video, we're going to look at the first Sonic animation to be marketed as a movie in the West. ADV Films, Sonic the Hedgehog, The Movie, from 1999. We'll go into the background of the movie, how we learned of its existence in the West, its promotion and initial release, my initial reactions from back in the day, followed by a full review and complete summary of the movie, with commentary throughout. So get ready to scrape your knuckles and, um, catch some tails as we dive deep into this 53-minute anime adventure. If you enjoy the video, please be sure to hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Let's begin! Like so many Sonic fans my age, who tick the same box on forms, the first time I learned of this animation's existence was from the Sega Saturn compilation game Sonic Jam. Sonic Jam! Back in August of 1997. As well as including new ports of Sonic's 2D adventures, this game's biggest draw was a brand new mode called Sonic World, which was also Sonic's 3D debut. In it, you could explore a small area of what looks like Green Hill Zone. There were missions to complete and various buildings to enter, such as an art gallery, a character house, and a music shop. But my favorite building by far was the movie theater. It had a bunch of clips you could watch, including hilarious Japanese ads, shorts, and other cool animations. But the one that grabbed my attention the most was the trailer for the Sonic the Hedgehog original video animation. See, in the West up until this point, we'd only had the weird AF adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and the cool, but tonally very different take on Sonic, Sat AM. I liked Sat AM fine enough, sure, but I still wanted something more Sega Sonic from my animated Sonic adventures. And holy shit did this trailer tick every box. The animation was great, the action sequences looked amazing, the music was cool, and Knuckles was in it, wearing a hat for some reason. It also had Badniks, Japanese-style Robotnik, or Eggman, and it had Metal Sonic. I loved it. I would watch this trailer over and over and over again. I was obsessed with it. I eventually looked it up online and learned more about it. It was a Japanese OVA, released as two VHS tapes in 1996. There was no English version at all. Not that being in Japanese would have bothered me particularly but it was unfortunately exclusive to Japan. I longed so badly for it, but even if I'd been able to import copies, my family VHS player was region locked to PAL. Plus, I was a kid with no money, and as cool as my parents are, Can you buy me these expensive imported Japanese VHS tapes that I won't be able to watch when they arrive? Would have been a tough sell. So I stuck with the trailer and hoped and hoped and hoped that one day these animations would see a Western release. Eventually though, I gave up on it and moved on. Over two years passed since I saw that trailer, and over three years since the Japanese OVA release. It was October 1999. I'd more or less forgotten about the OVA at this point. The Dreamcast had just released in the UK, and I was now getting my Sonic fix from the first adventure game. And I was loving it. Anyway, I was flicking through a Dreamcast magazine around that time when... Holy shit! What was this? It was an advert for the UK release of the Sonic OVA. Despite being a stereotypical moody teenager at this point, to say I was excited would be an understatement. I lost my shit. I would finally see this animation after, well, two years and three months. All right, it really wasn't very long, and it made sense for them to hold it back to tie it in with the UK's Dreamcast launch. But at that time, at that age, Going from 12 to 14 years old, the wait had felt like an eternity. And now I was finally going to see it. And the launch date was just a couple of weeks away. So on November 1st, 1999, I made my way to my local Virgin Mega Store and picked up a copy. After what felt like the world's longest train ride of building anticipation as I read the back of the VHS box over and over again, I got home pop that bad boy in the VHS player, and after a long, long wait and such high expectations, it was pretty damn good. There were parts of it I really liked, and parts that didn't quite work for me. It ranged from awesome to a bit weird at times. For example, I remember loving the action sequences. 
There was an excellent scene of Sonic racing around smashing badniks, as well as some really cool fight scenes between Hyper Metal Sonic and Metal Robotnik. The movie had a great soundtrack, and the animation and backgrounds looked really nice. Not movie nice in terms of budget, but it had a 90s anime coolness to it that I really liked. It's not a huge deal, but one of the things I wasn't so into at the time was with the voice acting in the English dub. No disrespect intended to the actors, but Sonic and Tails' voices in particular didn't really work for me at the time. Tails sounded blocked up, kinda like he had a cold, and Sonic just sounded... Mm, odd. It may have been because we'd already had years of Jaleel White voicing Sonic at that point, and we'd just gotten Ryan Drummond as the brand new voice of Sonic in Sonic Adventure at that time, and this movie's take was very different to both of those. Overall though, I found the movie to be a nice looking, fun time, with some great action sequences and fight scenes. A little short and strange at times though. Did it live up to the hype that the Sonic Jam trailer had created? Maybe not. But it was certainly enjoyable and very cool at times. Anyway, that was then and this is now, so let's go through the whole movie together and see how it holds up in the futuristic year of 2022. And I'll say right here that this will obviously include spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie and you're a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, maybe nip off for 53 minutes and watch it on YouTube, as it isn't available anywhere officially at the time of recording. Then come back to this video. Here we go. The movie opens with what I guess is the creation of Metal Sonic, or Hyper Metal Sonic, as he's called in this for some reason. He's just an empty shell at this point, as Robotnik explains he needs to capture Sonic's life data to complete Hyper before he can awaken. I gotta say, I love how ominous this opening is, by the way, and how these strobing shots are kind of like a mechanical heartbeat of sorts. Robotnik then gives Metal his mission. Kill him! Bloody hell, this Robotnik ain't fucking around. By the way, I really like Edwin Neal's voice as Dr. Robotnik here. Very sinister. Nicely done. He's probably my favorite English language voice actor in this movie. Next we cut to a lovely sunny island in the sky, as an owl in a tiny, tiny, tiny plane makes his way to it. This island is where Sonic and Tails live, in a home built out of a load of old junk. It's here where we first meet Sonic, who's lounging on the beach, just chilling like the cool dude he is. We then meet Tails, who is excited to show off his new jet-propelled bodyboard that he built. Sonic politely declines the offer to join him on the board, and instead stays on the beach, being an all-round cool dude. Tails ends up splashing Sonic repeatedly while playing with his new toy, which results in the only time I can think of in TV or film, where Sonic properly loses his rag and yells at Tails. What is pretty good is that just two minutes into this movie, they have already established that Sonic is cool and chill, Tails is younger and more excitable, Sonic can't swim, and Tails is an inventor. Next, the previously mentioned plane driving owl, revealed here to be simply known to the pair as Old Man, seems to be on the verge of crashing his ship, although he seems completely oblivious to the danger he's obviously in. He's probably reached that age where he shouldn't be driving anymore. Sonic refuses to help him. He says, not that old man again, suggesting this is a regular occurrence and he can't be asked to deal with it anymore. So, Sonic leaves the old man to his fate, while Tails, who does some yelling of his own, goes off to save him. And Foxboy does a pretty good job too. He catches up with the plane, manages to stabilize it, and all seems well, until he realizes they're about to slam into a cliff. So now it's Sonic's turn to step in. We then get a scene reminiscent of the opening of Sonic CD, where Sonic springs into action and is able to save both Tails and the old man. We next see the characters safe on dry land, where Tails is literally pointing and smiling at the confused, frightened old man, clearly amused by the state of distress he's in. How mean. I mean, look at this poor old bugger. He hasn't got a clue what's going on. But after using a crab meat to pinch some sense into him, they learn that Sonic is being summoned to meet with the President. So yeah, this world has a President. There we go. Next, Sonic and Tails pull some Tracy Island Thunderbird shit as they launch the tornado and head off to the President's house, located among some lovely futuristic cities in the sky. But when they enter the, um, White House of this universe, I guess, rather than encountering the President, they encounter 
Dr. Robotnik. He immediately tries to kill them with robots, with guns. Anyway, it is here, through some of Robotnik's exposition, that we learn that the Sonic OVA is set on planet freedom, and that in the grand scheme of things, Robotnik wants to take over South Island. So, we're kind of getting parts of the game plot here, mixed in with the movie's own original take on things. Using a hologram that he conjures up, Robotnik explains that this world has a sort of post-apocalyptic Earth beneath it called the Land of Darkness, and then a floating shell world called the Land of the Sky. It's an interesting take. We also meet some more original characters here. The President, and his leggy, half-human, half-cat thing, daughter, Sarah. This is just a guess, but I'd imagine the producers wanted to use her instead of Amy, in hopes of selling those pervy little statues and pillows of her, if this OVA was a success. Anyway, Robotnik reveals that he lives in the cold, dark world below in his own city, Robotropolis. But recently, a metal Robotnik and a bunch of demonic robots showed up, took over, kicked him out, and now an overcharged generator is going to blow up and destroy the land of the sky at sunrise the following morning, unless Sonic goes down there and stops it. This grim prediction bores the rest of the characters to sleep, even Robotnik's own robots. So, after kind of switching accents for a moment... Fine! Don't blame me when this happens! Robotnik pops his... hologram thing, whatever he conjured up, like a balloon, and everyone wakes up. I just wanted to point out here that this accent change happens a fair bit in this movie, particularly with Sonic and Robotnik. Maybe this dub was done pretty quickly, and they didn't quite nail down the final voices before starting recording. I don't know, that's just a guess. Anyway, ban! Much like in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog that I previously reviewed, Sonic can't be asked and refuses to help, saying Robotnik should clean up his own mess. It's a fair point, I guess. Then Sarah asks for him to please do it for the two of them, so I guess they'd be banging. Also, this new Sarah character seems like kind of a jerk. Sonic, I don't care what happens to Robotnik or Daddy, but please just do this for the two of us. She says she doesn't care what happens to Robotnik, fair enough, or her father. I mean, what a dick. What did he do to piss her off? It seems to come out of nowhere. Anyway, Sarah's request for help is enough to send our thirsty blue boy off into action. So Sonic and Tails head down to the Land of Darkness using the Tornado Plane. Prior to leaving, Robotnik gives Tails a locator gizmo to help them, and off they go, while Robotnik and Sarah play video games and his robots clean the White House. How nice of them. What's odd is that after Sonic and Tails leave, Sarah threatens to stop being Robotnik's hostage unless he plays a video game with her. A game, incidentally, where, where they're playing as themselves. Is she in on this scheme? Is she a hostage out of choice? Anyway, being the massive pain in the ass that she is, she eventually gets bored and demands to go on a drive. So Robotnik and Sarah bugger off in a vehicle. <sighs> Robotnik clearly doesn't know how to be a hostage taker, or captor or whatever. He's terrible at it. Either that or he too is a thirsty boy and is just going along with whatever she wants. Meanwhile, Sonic and Tails crash in the Land of Darkness, where they learn their destination is just on the horizon. So, cue a very cool action sequence of smashing badniks and trap dodging. I love the music in this scene too. It's pretty chilled in contrast to the action. Sonic and Tails then enter a warp zone. Okay, that's new for this series. Unless it's inspired by CD's time travel mechanic, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, it transports them to what looks like a post-apocalyptic New York City. These ancient relics suggest that this is taking place in our world a long time in the future. Pretty cool. We also see here that Tails is shit scared of lightning. Immediately after this, Metal Robotnik shows up, further scaring the crap out of our poor boy Tails with the flashing lightning around him. Poor little fella. After a brief fight, Sonic and Tails decide they don't have time to muck about fighting a giant robot, so race off to find the generator. But Metal Robotnik sprouts large, bat-like wings and boosts after them, shooting at them with machine guns and missiles. He's really going for the kill. It's a very cool, nicely animated chase scene. Metal Robotnik eventually catches up with Sonic and Tails and attacks them by... shitting glue onto them. I know, that's an easy joke to make, but what else can I say? 
Look at what he's doing. Look at where it's coming from. It traps Tails, but Sonic's able to fight back using one of Robotnik's missiles. The power behind these things is insane! Look at these explosions! These blasts also attract the attention of a nearby Knuckles, who is wearing a lovely hat. Unfortunately, Sonic also gets trapped in Metal Robotnik's arse glue and begins to drown. I love how menacing Metal Robotnik looks in this shot in the rain, by the way. Anyway, just before Metal Robotnik can kill Tails, Knuckles shows up in his gorgeous hat and frees Tails, who uses his previously established bodyboard skills to go and cancel Sonic's drowning process. With Sonic now free, he's able to help Knuckles, who is still kitted out with a fancy looking hat, and together with Tails, the three of them are able to make short work of Metal Robotnik. Ah, there's the lads look. We got Sonic Heroes in 1996, but with a gravity-defying Knuckles looking ruggedly handsome in a cowboy hat. Anyway, it turns out that Sarah and Robotnik were driving Metal Robotnik, and it's actually down to nothing more than luck that Sonic didn't slice them to pieces as he slammed through the robot a couple of times a moment ago. Sonic and Tails thank Knuckles for the help, who is sporting a brown cowboy hat and an over-the-shoulder bag, and they prepare to head off into Robotropolis. Which looks like a pretty damn cool place. All those lights. Sonic and Tails head off when a hatted, levitating Knuckles, being propelled simply by a sound effect, Knuckles! decides to join them for the remainder of their adventure. Which is good as they would have definitely been killed had he not showed up and helped them previously. Sonic also decides to defy gravity here too, and Tails breaks the fourth wall by looking directly into the camera and winking, and they all head off for OVA Adventure Part 2. When we rejoin the gang, they are racing down a corridor into Robotropolis and are having a lovely time until some of those annoying buggers from Launch Base Zone show up and ruin their fun. So, Sonic and Tails race off to the generator, while Knuckles, who is still donning a charming hat, glides off to take on the Snail Blasters. The generator, which Robotnik has decided to model after his own head, is almost at breaking point. Fortunately, Sonic is able to shut it off just in time, cutting power to Robotropolis. But, oh no, it's a trap! It was all a bloody mean trick! The generator was just a ruse to scan Sonic's life data and transfer it into Hyper Metal Sonic. And with this data, Metal is now complete and awakens. Sonic then comes face to face with his robot self. But that's not all. Robotnik has tried to repair Metal Robotnik. But luckily, it's a piss poor effort by his standards. The machine quickly falls arse over tit and splits in half. Never mind, eh? It's at this point that our heroes discover Robotnik and Sarah are in the machine together, and Robotnik is accused by Sarah of having a grope. Ew, 90s anime was weird. Anyway, Sarah is accused of being in cahoots with Robotnik, which seems likely to me, but she turns on the waterworks and immediately gets let off the hook. So Robotnik reveals his plan. Use Metal to kill Sonic so he can destroy the land of the sky. Why exactly? I'm not sure. He said earlier he likes Robotropolis. Well, why can't he leave the land of the sky be? Maybe he just wants some more sunlight down there and the floating islands above are blocking it out. Whatever, a fight then breaks out between Sonic and Metal. It's pretty cool, but Sonic is outmatched. After battering Sonic, Metal carries him off into the sky, leaving Tails and Knuckles the hat wearing echidna behind. We then cut to Robotnik and Sarah in Robotnik's ship. And I really don't get this. Like, is she actually, for reals, in on this scheme? Is she a villain? Robotnik unties her and asks her to please stay a little longer. Like, is she there out of choice? It's a very strange captor hostage dynamic. If I were Sonic, I wouldn't touch her with a barge pole. Anyway, the Sonic and Metal fight resumes, but Metal makes short work of Sonic, and an elated Robotnik celebrates Sonic will never again be a pain in my egg! What word is this? A pain in his egg? I hate it when my egg hurts. So with Sonic quote-unquote dead, Tails and the Red Hat Boy grab the tornado and head home. We then cut to the old man, who's having a lovely time on Sonic's beach, when Metal Sonic shows up and… murders him? We'll find out in a moment. Elsewhere, Sonic awakens in a lovely forest somewhere, 
while Robotnik is enjoying himself as Metal Sonic smashes up the land of the sky. We also learn here that Metal didn't murder the old man, he just forced him to wear Sonic's favourite clothes. Which is pretty funny, I guess. Like, he knows Sonic's likes and dislikes, so as well as killing Sonic, he wants to add insult to that injury by having a potentially incontinent old man wear his favourite threads. Meanwhile, Robotnik reveals the next part of his batshit crazy plan to Sarah. When the land of the sky is destroyed and everyone is dead, he will marry Sarah. The twisted logic here is that they will be the only ones left and she won't have anyone else to marry. Where the hell did this phase of the plan come from? And Robotnik seems genuinely surprised when she's less than enthusiastic about this idea. Elsewhere, Tails uses his mad science skills to figure out where Metal and Sonic will be by tinkering with the tracker Robotnik gave him at the start of the movie. He knows Sonic will be in the same place as Metal, as Metal is a copy and they both think in the exact same way. Clever boy. Next, Knuckles, who is fixing up the tornado and no longer wearing a hat of any sort, receives a phone call from the president. He updates the president and says that if Metal is going to destroy the land of the sky, he's going to have to go and target a specific glacier to do it. And Knuckles knows this because he's travelled the subterranean levels of the planet inside and out. It's a pretty grim outlook for planet freedom at this point. Side note, this post-apocalyptic, possibly future Earth is fucked. It's being held together by an icy thread. This movie is certainly on point with the environmental messages this series has long been known for. So, Sonic and Metal, Tails and Hat Wearing Knuckles, and Robotnik and Sarah all make their ways to the North Pole for the final showdown with Metal. Metal arrives and begins smashing up the place, but Sonic is hot on his trail. The two face off once again, and the best line in the movie is said. You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you since I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? Tails and Cowboy Hat the Echidna arrive on the tornado, and Robotnik and Sarah then show up too. But Metal immediately gets thrown into the bottom of this ship, where Sarah accuses him of being a pervert. while Sonic smashes his genitalia on the front of the ship, causing him great discomfort. Sarah then falls out of the ship down to the icy landscape below, but she is luckily caught and saved by Knuckles, who is still wearing a rather trendy hat. Soon after, Tails is shot out of the sky by Robotnik, who's using two of his more weird missiles. An effective one that looks like a rabbit, and a uselessly slow tortoise or turtle one that is too slow to be of use to anyone. A poor design indeed. Anyway, after a direct hit on the tornado, they all crash into a big heap where Tails is accused by a hat wearing Knuckles of groping her. Meanwhile, the Sonic and Metal fight is still going on, while Hat Knuckles is tasked with diverting a magma flow or, or something. He's successful, but oh god no, the hat is damaged in the process. This is a tragedy. To make matters even worse, Sonic steps on Knuckles' hatless head during the fight, giving him a painful looking lump. Ouch! So anyway, Metal is about to kill Sonic when Tails realizes he can use the locator Robotnik gave him earlier to interfere with Metal's programming. Great teamwork from these fellas in this movie. With Metal all fucked up, Sonic is able to smash Metal into the distance. Suddenly, for some reason, the president shows up and drops a huge bollock by crashing into a vital piece of the glacier in a burning ship. Like, why was he there? I guess maybe it looked good for him politically, like to be on the front line? Maybe it looked bad if he wasn't there. Either way, he's made things a lot worse. Useless. Sonic and Tails go to save the president, but Metal reappears, fucking up the rescue plan. Robotnik then destroys Tails' device so he can no longer control Metal, meaning it's up to Sonic to finish the fight. So, after some more fisticuffs, Sonic uses Metal to dislodge the ship by throwing him into it. He then smashes Metal into the window to break the glass, but what a risky move. Like, look at that, I doubt the president would survive that explosion. Or the flimsy ice bridge that's literally holding the world together. Thankfully at this point, Metal has a change of heart. Maybe it's because his circuits have been all naffed up by Tails, but for whatever reason, he saves the president and 
the old man? Wait, why was he there? In an earlier scene, the president calls him an idiot. Why bring him? He hasn't exactly proven himself to be a great pilot or anything. Anyway, everyone is safe, but a piece of debris knocks metal into the lava pit. Sonic, being the nice fella he is, tries to save him, but Metal refuses the rescue attempt, declaring, there is only one Sonic. He is then consumed by lava, Terminator 2 style. And it turns out, he could speak all along. What a twist. In the end, everyone gathers together in relief that it's all over, as Robotnik is blown up by the turtle missile I mentioned earlier. The movie closes with Knuckles smacking Sonic on the head as payback from earlier. And while Sonic runs away, the rest of the cast try to catch up with him at Sarah's request. I don't blame Sonic for doing a runner from this madness. By the way, Robotnik faces no consequences for his crimes whatsoever. They're all just kind of friendly at the end, even though he threatens moments earlier to do the same thing again as soon as possible. And that's it. The end. Overall then, I know I've made some silly comments in this review, but this movie isn't bad. I rather enjoyed it when it first released, and I had a good time revisiting it for this review. For me, the best parts of it are the action sequences, the 90s anime art style, and the soundtrack. Also, it's great to see Japanese Eggman in animated form, as well as Metal Sonic. Sorry, Hyper Metal Sonic. In my opinion, it falls a little flat when it comes to some of the English voice acting. And the plot is pretty thin. That said, it's only 53 minutes long, including credits, so there's not a whole lot of time for plot here. In fact, it's a bit much to call this a movie. It was never intended to be one, and the whole thing feels very short. Also, Sarah is annoying AF, and she comes across as being around a bloody twist. I'm still not sure if she was a villain and whether she was in on this whole weird scheme from the start. Anyway, Sonic fans will definitely find something to enjoy here. People who aren't familiar with the series, I don't know, maybe. So what did you think of Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie? Brackets, 1999. Did you enjoy it? When did you see it? Did any fellow old farts like me get excited for this from the Sonic Jam trailer back in the day? Was this movie your first experience with Sonic? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Check out some of my other uploads and consider subscribing for weekly, high quality Sonic and Sega videos. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.